Fantastic. So good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining our first uh, online team demo of the year. Um, if you haven't joined us before, and even if you have, I hope you're in for a treat. Those that um, are familiar faces will know what to expect. We have got an uh, ever increasingly <laughs> ambitious menu of dishes planned, including a surprise addition, thanks to Cutty, <laughs> today. So we're going to try and whiz through about eight things for you this evening, which will aim to show you the real versatility um, of the Thermomix, which is what this incredible appliance is all about. Um, so I'm just going to briefly introduce um, everybody. Uh, so that you know who is going to be taking you through all the recipes this evening. Um, so firstly, uh, most of you know me, I'm Lindsay, I'm, the, I'm the team leader uh, in, in, uh, for my team in the East Midlands branch, so I'm based in Grantham, just outside Nottingham in the Midlands. Um, I'm a trained chef, I um, have had my Thermomix now for about, well, just coming up for five years actually. I've been a Thermomix advisor for nearly five years as well. Um, I was the sort of person that said I would never have a Thermomix because I loved cooking. Uh, I don't normally like being proved wrong, but on this occasion, very happy to be. Uh, couldn't have got it more wrong. I love cooking even more with my Thermomix now. Um, so we've got Marie. Marie, give us a wave. Marie um, Marie is a chef as well. She's worked in hospitality for all of her career. Um, she runs a fabulous chocolate business. Um, her chocolate business is Three Little Birds. She runs chocolate making workshops and um, cocktail workshops as well um, for uh, private individuals and, um, um, and corporate clients. Uh, Marie has, uh, Marie actually began with us as a, to earn her Thermomix. She, she was really keen on having a Thermomix, but didn't want to pay for it, decided she was going to earn for it, uh, earn it, so earn her Thermomix by making for sales. Then next to uh, Marie, we have Natasha. Hey, Natasha. Natasha is another team leader. So yeah, this is very exciting this evening. We've actually got, well, we've got more team leaders on the call, but we've got three team leaders here from three, and this is the first time we've, we've all come together across three different branches. So Natasha is in a different branch to me. She's in East Anglia. Um, Natasha is uh, an air hostess, uh, she's cabin crew with BA, so she, this is very much a sort of a secondary source of income for Natasha, but again, she was an owner, absolutely loved her Thermomix and decided to turn her passion into an income uh, by becoming an advisor and now she's a team leader. And we have next to Natasha, we have the lovely Claire. Hello Claire, Claire is from Hertfordshire, the Hertfordshire branch I think, aren't you? No, uh, we're sorry. Ascot, Ascot, Ascot branch. Sorry, oh, sorry, darling. Ascot <laughs> branch. All the same down there. Um, Claire was an owner, uh, connected with me via social media, um, looked to turn her passion for Thermomix into an income. Here she is a few years later as a team leader in her own right. So we're just very delighted to have Claire. Claire is a lot of fun, very knowledgeable. She's monitoring the chat for us this evening. She's not cooking, she had an eye operation. Um, but she's got a really a equally important role of monitoring the chat. Then we've got underneath Claire, um, we have got Linda. Um, Linda, did you earn your Thermomix with free or were you an owner first? I can't remember. Uh, um, no, I was an owner. owner first. You were an owner. Owner first. So Linda runs another business but just loves her Thermomix and loves sharing the passion for it with, with, uh, with everybody. And we've got Linda very unusually doing something very healthy for us later this evening. So we need to watch her like a hawk that she doesn't sneak any vodka or gin in her turmeric shots. Uh, next to Linda, we've got Cutty. Um, hello, give us a wave. So Cutty was one of my customers. Um, Cutty is a former Olympic horse rider or a venter. I think it's a venter, isn't it? I should really say this properly. Um, so Cutty actually bought her Thermomix for her husband and he's never had a lick in. Um, she was an appalling cook. Uh, I think that's fair to say, isn't it? Um, she couldn't really, she was known for burning everything um, and now she wows everybody with her amazing creations. I can't actually quite believe what she turns out. So I just say to you that, that the Thermomix is not just suitable for people that can cook, um, but also people that can't cook as well. And it turns everybody into a professional chef. Then we've got Sue. Sue is our resident healthy eating guru. So Sue runs a kinesiology business. Very interesting. Lindsay, Lindsay can yes. I just interrupt you? Everybody's saying that um, you need to be nearer your uh, phone because they can't hear you. We can, 
I think we can hear you all right, but it's coming across as echoey. Oh, I didn't mean to upset her. She's gone. <laughs> Is everybody else that. muted? Because that might not be helping either. It says that she was the host. Lindsay Sadler is the co-host now. Lindsay Sadler is the host, so. Hang on, hang on. She's back in the room, hang on. Uh, I'm back. Joys of technology. Mm. Is it my AirPods? Do I need to come off my AirPods? I don't know. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, at the moment, but you're just not, um, hang on. I don't understand that. It's all, Do you wanna try it, try it without the AirPods and see if it's better? Okay, let me just try. I'm just going to see. Let me put you onto the speaker. On the speaker. Uh, okay, why have I got two sharing? Is that any better? Can somebody say something? Yeah, I feel that sounds good. That sounds good. That sounds sounds good. Bad. Bad. Should I just ditch the AirPods? Okay, fine. Let me just put them in so that they don't... Um, let me put them back in their case. I think I've got a problem with these because I have the same on the phone, actually. Uh, right, we've got so Sue. Sue's a kinesiologist. Sue was one of my customers. Again, um, absolutely loves her Thermomix. Um, so she's turned her passion into an income by sharing Thermomix with her customers as well. And it fits really neatly into her holistic health and wellness business. Then we've got Louise um, underneath. First time with Louise joining us. Very excited. Louise is a nutritional therapist and podcaster. She's written a fantastic uh, book on how to feed your children more healthily, which was published a couple of years ago. Um, I don't have a copy to hand, Louise, but if you've got one, you know, around, then do feel free to wave it. <laughs> Although I know she'll be mortified that I've introduced her in this way as a best-selling author and podcaster. Um, and then have I missed anybody out? I hope not. Right, I'm going to kick off. I want to get going, really, was just with introducing you to this fabulous machine. Um, so this is what, what this is what we call a demonstration. So we invite both um, those that are considering becoming Thermomix owners to the call and also our existing customers, because it is a way to support our existing customers and inspire them to cook new recipes. Um, so I'm just going to run very, very quickly through the Thermomix. Um, uh, starting off with what it is, um, I'm just going to run through a couple of functions and then we're going to get we're going to get cooking. I promise we're going to get cooking and I've asked my team to not let me talk for too long. So what is a Thermomix? Really? Well, it's, it's a way to simplify your cooking process from start to finish, from deciding what you want to cook, organising your recipes to shopping for ingredients uh, and, and then it takes over, it does the cooking. Um, and then it cleans itself up at the, uh, at the end. So using a Thermomix will not only save you time, it will save you money, it will save you effort, and it will save you energy, both your own energy um, and your the energy that you consume by your um, electricity bills. Um, it's fantastic for people, as I mentioned, that both love and hate cooking. There is an aspect of Thermomix for everybody. Um, and we have Thermomix used in Michelin star kitchens all across the world because it is simply one of the most versatile, best pieces of equipment that you can use. But we also change people's lives in their own homes when they have a Thermomix because often people that couldn't cook before can suddenly produce gastronomic feast at the touch of a button. Um, so there are two unique aspects really of a Thermomix versus a food processor or a blender. So it's not just a fancy blender. Um, the first thing is, is not only that it has the um, ability to sort of stir and do all of those food processor, processor type functions, but it can also heat. So it's got very, very precise temperature control. And that is really important um, because it does just transform the end result of your dishes. The second difference with Thermomix is Cookie Do. So we have an online recipe platform. This is an incredible resource of 80,000 recipes and counting. And through Cookie Do, you can um, organize what you want to eat. You can shop for ingredients. You can create a shop. So you can create a shopping list. You can transfer that to your online shopping provider. Then it will be delivered directly to your door. Um, and then 
once you want to cook your recipe um, in the comfort of your kitchen, Cookie Do takes over and walks you step by step through the cooking process. So what do we mean by that? If I just very quickly show you, um, uh, Claire, if can you spotlight my other, uh, let me see if I can spotlight this as well, add spotlight, right. Okay, so I don't want to join audio on that later. Otherwise, I get a horrible echo. So, for example, if I'm going to go through one of the recipes on my screen, um, uh, so these are the recipes that we've said that we're all cooking this evening. So you can see you can make a weekly planner. Um, then, so, for example, I did this for dinner this evening, the beef and beer pie. So here we go. Launch it. Let's start cooking. It will walk me step by step. What I'm going to do. So then it takes over and it tells you, right, the first step is going to, put, going to put some oil in. So you just weigh. Can you see I'm pressing down on the top of here and it is weighing. The, the, the Thermomix is weighing for me. Then we're going to add some beef meat. This is an American recipe, so it's automatically adapted to ounces. And then the high temperature function comes on and we're preset to cook for five minutes, high temperature. Um, and the Thermomix is just going to cook and stir for me. So I can just walk away at that point in time. So it's absolutely brilliant. What I, I, I did loads of things during five minutes this afternoon while my beef was browning. And then you can see, you just build up the recipe again, just going through the separate steps. It just splits the meat into two cooking phases, just so it browns it perfectly. Um, and then once it's cooked, you're gonna add your onion in. It's gonna chop your onion up. So it's multifunctional. So it's got so many different functions that it can do. You add your yeast, um, yeast, leeks, sorry, I've got yeast on the, on the brain. Um, it's going to saute and sweat off the onions and leeks for you. You add your meat in, you put your air, and, and then um, you can see that it's going to take over and cook now for 18 minutes, constantly stirring that mixture for the beef uh, pies. And then at the end, you're going to then, it's going to stop, it's going to make the pastry for you. So that is just an example of how a recipe will show on the screen, but we will have other examples as we go through. Um, so what can a Thermomix do? Well, the way to answer that is not only is it is a food processor and a blender, but these are all the different functions that we have. So we can make bread with it. You can use it, it's got a really high power turbo function, so it will chop nuts, uh, grind grains into flour, it will clean itself, which is absolutely brilliant. You can blend with it, you can boil your eggs to perfection. Um, you can use it as a kettle, you can warm up food, you can thicken with it, so you can thicken sauces. So this is brilliant for things like hollandaise and bechamel sauce. You can cook rice with it, you can ferment yogurt with it. We're gonna talk about yogurt in detail uh, a little bit later on in this demo. You can slow cook, you can sous vide, you can peel. And now with this new attachment we've got here, which we're gonna show you because this is part of this month's offer, you can also grate and slice. So there is really no need to have any other piece of kit in your kitchen really apart from an oven. So about the only thing um, a Thermomix won't do is, is the functions that you would do in an oven or an air fryer, such as bake or roast. Um, so how much does a Thermomix cost? A Thermomix is 1,189 pounds. There are three ways to pay for your Thermomix. You can either pay um, on a card outright in one go on a debit or a credit card. You can spread your payment over one, two, three or four years. Um, and currently on the one year plan until, the, until next Thursday, so a week today, the 19th of January, we have got interest free on the one year finance plan, meaning that your Thermomix costs from just a hundred pounds a month. On a four year finance plan, your Thermomix costs under 30 pounds a month and you will save way more than it costs to buy off of your grocery bills just by changing the way that you shop and cook and eat. Um, the third way to pay for a Thermomix is to become a Thermomix advisor. We have lots of people that, that join us because they want to earn their Thermomix for free. We give everybody the opportunity to do that. As owners, if you wanted to earn a second Thermomix for free, you can do that as well. Um, so if anybody wants to find out more about earning a Thermomix for free or the longer term career opportunities that we can offer, please do get in touch with your advisor um, and let one of us know and we will happily um, talk to you about that as well. Um, so if you want to see a Thermomix up close and personal, of course, we're, we're taking you through a very sort of generic overview this 
evening. If you want to get up close and personal with a the Thermomix, then please do ask your advisor to come and run a demo for you. No, you don't have to cook yourself. That is what we are for. We love going to our customers' houses um, and showing them and their friends what a Thermomix can do. It's an ideal opportunity if you're a new Thermomix owner or if you just want to refresh um, to uh, find out about some new recipes and get some new inspiration. And of course, we get to introduce the Thermomix to new owners and, and build our fabulous community. If you do that as well, you'll be offered a host gift if you have a minimum of three or four friends to come and enjoy, enjoy the experience with you. They are hands down the favorite part of all of our jobs. We love coming out to see our customers, engaging with you and just showing off what a Thermomix can do. Um, so, Hopefully that was a very, very, very quick guide. If I've got a chance to show you cookie do later, I will do. But what I want to do now, I said I wanted to cook by eight o'clock. I'm five minutes ahead. I want to shoot straight over to Marie, um, who is going to show us the first recipe of the evening, which is the steamed sea bass um, with uh, vegetables and a soup. So this is a brilliant example of multi-level cooking, which is another very unique feature of the Thermomix. And I'm gonna let Marie tell you more about that. Hi. Right. Um, brilliant. So, yes, as Lindsay was saying, um, we're going to do a recipe which is cream of lettuce soup with uh, steamed sea bass, potatoes and vegetables with the watercress sauce. Um, this isn't actually a recipe I've ever done before. So first time for me live tonight. Um, but I don't have any queries with that because... Um, a, I've had it recommended by um, Kuti, um, a fellow advisor obviously on, on with us tonight, and also because I've come to trust um, the, the cookie do recipes, 95% um, of the time they just are spot on every time, certainly with the things of like cooking fish, which can be quite tricky in itself, um, the timings of them are uh, being sorted so that it's just absolutely perfect. And um, because it will heat to exactly a very precise temperature, uh, you don't have to worry about trying to make sure that you, you are cooking your meat or your fish at particular temperatures. It's sorted all that for you. So I'll bring you down to the machine and we'll talk you through it. So, whoop, sorry, nearly lost you off the end of the table. Um, right, okie dokie. So uh, start cooking nice and easy. We're just going to start by adding in um, the watercress. Um, so as Lindsay pointed out, you've got the inbuilt scales, which just make life so much easier. There's no additional weighing needed. So nice and easy watercress in, measuring cup and lid on top and turn it around to speed four. Um, quick and easy. And give that a quick brush down the sides. And three seconds there, and it's completely chopped all that watercress up. Um, just on its own, that fine chopping um, takes absolutely ages when done with a knife. And as someone who spent very many years chopping herbs and chopping garlic and onions. I've no desire to necessarily do that on a daily basis at home as well. <laughs> so uh, tear the scales again, and we'll just add in some lemon juice. So five to 10 grams lemon juice. Next, a little bit of salt. So just gonna put a pinch in there and some pepper, nice and easy. And some extra virgin olive oil. Now, as Lindsay was saying, this is a brilliant recipe because it is multi-level cooking. Um, I love recipes that allow us to um, cook multiple elements at the same time. So not only do we have less washing up to do, but also we are only using one uh, point of energy so there's just one electricity um, component being ran at the time and completing an entire meal it just tells them to pop the lid on there and pop that up to speed five and mix it for 20 seconds so another item that you've got is you have a little preview button and this tells you what to do next so you can just fast forward and find out and really maximize the time 
uh, whilst the machine is doing something by prepping your next steps. So I have done that. I've got the next few steps prepped and ready to go. And that is our watercress sauce or made. So it's almost a little bit like a watercress pesto is what it's made, realistically speaking, um, but without the sort of uh, pine nut element in there. So I'm just going to scrape that down and pop that into a sauce boat. Oh, it smells nice and zesty. My lemon juice in there. Going to worry about scraping it out too much because we're going to be cooking the potatoes in the same bowl. I'm not going to be washing it out or anything because it's all going to be added flavour going into the potatoes and then later into the soup. Right. So, bowl back on. And can you see the watercress sauce there? That's good to go. So now it tells you to just put 500 grams of water in. There we go. And then salt your water. And add in your simmering basket. Now, I have pre-weighed out my potatoes, which are currently in the simmering basket. This is the simmering basket. This is going to go inside the um, actual mixing bowl, put that in there. Um, this is going to tell me now to add the potatoes in which I've already done there. Um, and then the next level we're going to do is the Varoma. It tells you on the instructions here to put lettuce leaves in the bottom of the Varoma and then put the sea bass on top, making sure that we've left some holes in the bottom for the steam to be able to get through. So just when you're doing it, if you just make sure you've got some little gaps for the steam to be able to get through, we've got the lettuce leaves laid in there, and then we've got a steam bath over the top of it. Okay, we're going to add in just a little bit of the watercress sauce. Sorry, I forgot a teaspoon. Uh, right, a little bit of the watercress sauce inside the sea bath. You see there? I'll just put that inside there to flavour the fish as it cooks so that it goes both inside from the flesh side out and then we'll add the rest of the sauce on afterwards. All of the instructions are coming up on screen so I'm not having to think about what I'm doing particularly, literally just follow um, the instructions as they're put out there. And then add a few more lettuce leaves onto the top of the Varoma to cover the fish. So just got the remaining lettuce leaves going on there. That's all done. So pop the lid on the machine and pop the Varoma on. And uh, just pop the lid on, it's all it says next. All I'm going to do that it doesn't say on the recipe is I'm also going to use the Varoma tray that comes with it. And I've just added some extra veggies on there as well, because I like to add extra veggies to most every meal. So dead simple, that's it. So we've got potatoes in the base. We've already used it to make a sauce. We've not washed it out. We've got the potatoes in the base now. We've got our lettuce and our fish in here. We've got our veggies cooking on top. And that's going to go on for 25 minutes. And you're going to come back to me a little bit later and see how we uh, then uh, make the soup up and see the fish as a finished product. Thanks, Marie. Right, we're going to go over to Cutty now, um, who is going to show us the new cutter very appropriately. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I promise. Yeah, I've only, I've only used it okay, so I'm going to be making the root of vegetable rosties. Um, this is the new cutter. So you come to this. I'm going to just pop that on top of the blades. blades. And then, and then I'm going to put the oh, oh, here it is. Sorry. thingy on. Sorry, I thought that was some new tool. Um, and then, come on, here we go. Now it says number two, it's got a one and a two, two on, all for different types, like the thin grating, thick grating. Um, or slicing. So this is telling me to put the number two up because we're going to be grating. So rusty. Just pop that on top. I have to do it back to front as well, which is not. There you go. Okay, so I put that together and now it's telling me to put in which one was first? 
the sweet potatoes. So I did boil these out earlier because it took me much time out earlier. Um, so I'm going to put that in. I think I can do chip time. There you go, that'll do. We're all quite new to this, right? Okay, so next I'm going to grate these as thick. Okay, I just push this down. I'm just going to quickly show you what that has done. You see, it's great that sweet potato. It's lost a bit of it. And then we're going to do the parsnips. There we go. And then we're going to do the thick weighting again. Just remember all the recipes are in the chat if anybody wants to save them. I just did that while Cutty was cutting. And then we're going to do the beetroot that I peeled with a blade cover earlier. Blade cover and peeler. I'm going to do the same with this. I've never done this recipe before, so. <laughs> We only decided to do it this morning. Um, let's move the mix cutter and sharp. There we go. So I'll just show you what it has done. Took all that veg. It's all grated up, all the veg. Okay. Oh, don't ever forget to take that out. Hey, Natasha. We have all casualties of the people leaving the spindle in. So it's really, really important it gets removed. <laughs> and it's quite easy to leave it in. So uh, Sarah, can you take it out and the offer actually while you're talking. Can you just mention the offer? Because we haven't talked about I didn't talk about the cutter offer. Sorry, yes. So um, this month um the because the cutter is 85 pounds on its own. But with, um, with buying a Thermix this month, you can get the cutter for £30. So a big discount there. And of course, we have the 0% on offer on um, finance offer on at the moment until, well, for another week until the 19th of January. But yeah, um, so it's really good. And it's really good. Because that would have taken ages to a greater. Um, that's down. So it's a really good little new new product. So good, in fact, that it sold out in the first three days, which hasn't been overly helpful. But but they did hold a few back for for the offer, apparently. Okay, so I've done some garlic, two medium eggs, ones I cracked earlier. There we go. And then 70 grams of plain flour. This is weighing it out, but I did weigh it out earlier just to save a bit of time. There we go. Salt. And obviously, you don't need to put, you can reduce the salt, you can put in as much as you like or as little as you like. So I'll just put You're in control of everything that's going in here. So if there's something you don't like, Leave it out. Insert the lid, lid on. And this is going to stay for 20 seconds. I don't know whether you can hear me while, while that's, oh no, it's not too loud. But um, this is what attracts me, because in this recipe, really, you've just got the veg, some salt and pepper, there's no, and a little bit of salt, but as I say, you can leave that out if you wish. But it's all pretty clean, healthy food. And that's what attracted me to the Thermomix, really, because, um, because it is clean eating. So additives, preservatives, and all that. That's what we're trying to reduce. Okay, it's made of butter. Okay, now I'm going to put in the veg, especially grated veg. There we go. 
And it's great that it's got this bowl, so it doesn't restrict you using the thermomix. You know, you don't have to clean out the thermomix or anything like that. It's got this bowl that it all goes into. Lid on. Next. That's going to just mix that for five seconds. C3 reverse. Lay it on in reverse. There we go. Let's go to a bowl. So that's my root veg rosti. I'm going to pop it in here. Nice and pink beetroot. But I guess you can use any veg. You can use any root veg you like. You don't always have to stick to the recipe. They're guided recipes and they're there, um, they're there for a guide, but you can change them and put in if you don't like something, change it. Okay. So now it's telling me, oh, let me just clear my mess up. I always tend to work in a bit of carnage. Right, here we go. Back to saying, just basically. Right, so just gonna put the rosties. Nice. I'm going to put these, I'm going to just measure these out. Let's see. Then I'm going to just bake them for 15 minutes on one side, flip them over, and 15 minutes on the other side. And I'll let you know how we get on. But that was all pretty easy with your chopping. Can you see? Yeah. I won't. I won't. Light work of it, doesn't it, Cutty? Amazing. Because I used yeah, to be there yeah. for a man's in, and then you'd have to wash it all up at the end. Well, I love the fact that when it when it slices or grates, it ends up in the bowl, leaves your Thermomix bowl clean so that you can just get on with something else and tip it in. It's fab. Right. We'll leave Sarah doing that. And then, um, Claire, can you just spotlight both of my views for me? That would be really handy. Thank you. Um, right. So we've got one of Sarah and one of me. Shall I just spotlight the other one? I think. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, back. Right, hello everybody. I'm back again. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of yogurt. So we're going to do two different things with yogurt. I love making yogurt in my Thermomix. It saves me so much money. I've got four children. They were eating me. Well, they eat me out of house and home anyway. Especially the oldest one, he's 16. Um, but I could be going through an entire six pack of Muller Corners on a daily basis. They'd have them in packed lunches. They'd have them as an after school snack. They'd have them for pudding in the evening. Now I make them my yogurt. It is as good as a Muller Corner. I can control absolutely everything that is in it, um, and it saves me an absolute fortune. So I save at least. 10 pounds a week to making my own yogurt. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot, I won't say, I won't swear. There's a lot of rubbish um, as well uh, in commercially manufactured yogurt. In fact, I was reading an article at the weekend in the, the Telegraph to inspect, so I put it on the Thermomix with customer group. Um, gave us 20 tips for sort of a healthier living and to improve your kind of gut. Um, and, and your microbiome and your health. And what, one, of the, one of the tips he had was if you really want to improve your gut health, do not buy uh, manufactured yogurt. Um, he, he actually said that they, they've changed, food companies have changed the humble plain yogurt into hundreds of products, most of which are, un, most of which are unhealthy. Flavoured and altered yogurts contain additives and sweeteners and fall better into the category of ultra processed foods, especially those aimed at children. So there's a lot of stuff that really shouldn't be in there. So if you're buying yogurt with all of those sweeteners and additives in there, thinking it's really good for your gut, it isn't. 
And his recommendation was going back to eating natural live yogurt is one of the simplest swaps we can make to improve our health. So there you go. That is right from the horse's mouth from Tim Spector. So I'm just going to show you a couple of ways that you can easily use your Thermomix to do that. The first um, way we're, what we're going to do is we're going to make some uh, homemade actimels or yakults. So if I just switch my um, view around here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow the plain yogurt recipe on here. There's a few different yogurt recipes on the Thermomix. The plain yogurt one um, uh, is, is the one that I have started using because mainly because it's really, really quick and easy. Uh, lots of yogurt recipes will involve heating up your milk and your cream to about 80 degrees and then letting it cool down for an hour till it reaches 37 or 40 degrees and then adding your probiotic cultures. Um, that's great if you've got all of that time. I'm a really busy mum, I don't. Um, so I have found this yogurt recipe on, on the Thermomix, which means that you can do it in six minutes instead, which is fine. So here it is, you can see it's loaded on it. I'm just gonna press start cooking. Now, as Cutty mentioned, all of these recipes are guided. You can play about with them, um, altering quantities. And this is exactly what I'm going to do um, to make these axi mouse. I'm gonna completely pack around with this recipe. Uh, that's what my customers and my team will know me for. Um, there's nothing more I like than tinkering with recipes. Um, right, so I'm, I'm not gonna make, I could make this into a, a, liter, a full liter. I'm not going to, I made some yesterday just to show you. So I'm gonna halve this recipe. So the first instruction is to put a litre of milk in. I, as you'll see, I'm just going to, you can use any milk you like, really. Um, I'm just using sort of regular semi-skimmed milk. Other brands are available, but you could use raw milk if you wanted to as well. Um, or, you know, Jersey, cream, milk, um, or organic milk. The choice is yours, um, depending on your, obviously, your budget and your priorities. Um, right, so let's just, let's put that in. Right, so just say the shot slightly, it's absolutely fine. So I'm going to put my milk in. Lindsay, two questions for you. Can you use goat's milk? Don't know the answer to that. Pardon? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you could use lactose-free milk. Uh, <laughs> so if you're wanting to use things like oat milk and coconut milk it might be there might be a slightly different process involved i have made some excellent coconut milk yogurts actually um using a live coconut yogurt starter um and then and, and then some coconut milk um or coconut cream uh there is the step-by-step -step recipe that i use on my thermomix with customer group so claire if you want to just reference that in the chat then people can pick it up right so at this point, if you're making yogurt, it will ask you to put in a natural yogurt starter. So this is just a starter with some live bacteria in it. If you are in that habit of making yogurt, you would just use the, uh, a, a jar from your previous batch. Um, now, if you're making Yakult or Actimel, you can use a Yakult or Actimel at this point in here. I was too tight yesterday when I was walking around the supermarket to buy one because I saw that they were four pounds, I think, for six or seven. And I thought, there's no way I'm gonna buy those. I'm just going to use these, which are simple, regular probiotic capsules. Um, so I'm just gonna empty my probiotic capsules into that instead of my natural yogurt or Actima starter. And then click next. I'm gonna ignore the milk powder because I don't want this to thicken. I want it to remain like a drinking yogurt. So you'll see the difference in a minute because I'm going to show you the Greek yogurt that you can make as well. So this is one that I made yesterday and I fermented it. So here we go. So look, there we go. So I'm just pouring it in. It's like a drinking yogurt type consistency. Right, so let's do that to the side. Right. Okay, so now my, him, my dial's come up. So I've got time, temperature and speed. On the first dial, I've got the time. The temperature is preset to 50. The time is preset to six minutes. So it's just going to heat up for us. And then you're going to turn that speed selector to speed three and off it goes. So it's just going to heat um, and stir for six minutes. And during which you can just go and do something completely different. Lindsay, where do you get your probiotic capsules from? 
Uh, so I use a company called um, Synergy Worldwide, which isn't really readily available. You'd have to find a distributor. So if you wanted to use these ones in particular, um, talk to me. I can point you in the right direction. I like these because these contain a culture called Bacillus coagulans, which is really, really good for IBS. But you can also use just regular... I mean, these are some vegan probiotics that I got in a health food store a couple of years ago. So you can just use regular probiotic capsules you find in Holland and Barrett, for example. Uh, the choice is yours. So you can pick the sort of strain that you want to use as well. Or you can just use some yogurt to start or some yakult to start. Right. What are we? So I'm going to show you something completely different now, which is also going to use the cutter. So this is the frozen yogurt bark recipe, brand new recipe on the thermo on the you do. So very excited to be doing this. So let's just move across, move you across. Okay, so line a plate with paper towels and set aside. Right, I've already did that earlier. I've lined my tray and then it wants me to weigh in some strawberries. I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to chuck them down the chute. Right, so a bit like Sarah showed you. What have I got in here? It's a good one. How are you going to take that out, actually? Before I start assembling my cutters, so I'm going to put my shaft in. Claire, you do not need to make a comment about that. <laughs> my spindle. <laughs> right, lid goes on. I no. almost did. I've done it <laughs> already, haven't I? Here we go. So, woo, shaft goes in, spindle goes in, bowl goes in. Then it says insert the Thermomix cutter. With what side do we want? Side one facing upwards. So on here somewhere, my eyes are going. So on here somewhere, there's a number one. Here we go. Number one goes in. You can see I used this earlier. I didn't bother washing out. That's one of the joys of the Thermomix. If you're very clever about how you schedule what you do, you don't need to do much washing up at all. Um, right. So that's gone in. Now, Place the cutter lid on the top. So it's really, really an idiot guide, isn't it? I mean, it, it walks you through every single step. So you can't really get it wrong. Unless you're Natasha, who chewed up her, her spin. Sorry, Natasha, I couldn't resist. I know, it was bad. <laughs> right, okay, so here we go. Now I'm just gonna shove my strawberries in. That's the technical word. I've got loads of strawberries in here. So they're all just gonna go in, higgledy piggledy. And then it says turn the speed selector to thick. So we're gonna just turn that. So cutty grated, I'm slicing. Put in next two. There we go, already done. Stop that and transfer to a plate. So let me just show you what that looks like. So look at these. I mean, you could chop them with a knife, but why would you? <laughs> so what I want you to do is have a, a plate with some paper towels ready and then just arrange them, just pop them on here, just so that you drain off. Because obviously when you cut this fruit, it, it does become quite wet. So you just want to drain off that ex excess moisture. Chop it like that. And then I'll just pop a little paper towel on the top. There we go. Leave it over there. Right, next thing. Next, remove Thermomix cutter and shot. So out it comes. Really important. It is amazing how you can just forget that small detail. Right, now I'll put the butterfly whisk in. So again, here's the whisk. The whisk comes with the Thermomix, as do all of the accessories apart from the blade cover and now the new cutter because they are optional accessories. This whisk, again, you need to be quite careful with it. When you put it in over the top of the blade, just give it a little twist after insertion, an eighth of a turn. That just locks the whisk into position. Okay, now it's asking for some Greek yogurt. So here you can see, here's some made earlier. This is some beautiful homemade Greek yogurt. This Greek yogurt, costs about half the price of buying it. Um, let me just show you. So I, there is a Greek yogurt recipe on the Thermomix. Claire, if you want to link it in the chat, it's the Greek yogurt with, your, with, with honey and walnut. It might have walnuts in it, I'm not sure. Um, but just already, already done. The Greek yogurt with honey. Now, let me show you what I've got here. So you can see, 
I can put my laptop back a bit. See my little contraption. I have got an old muslin. So you can see the whole thing. There we are. Um, so I've got my thermix bowl underneath. I've got my Varoma that Marie is cooking her sea bass in. Um, and then inside, of it, so I've lined the Varoma with a muslin and I put all of the yogurt that I made inside the muslin. Because what happens is that when you make Greek yogurt, Greek yogurt is strained. That's why it's beautifully thick and creamy. And that is why it's more expensive than regular yogurt because actually during the process, of straining it, you lose half of the liquid content. Okay, now this is an added benefit when you make it yourself because do not pour this down the sink. This is amazing for things like baking, for making scones with, for making American pancakes with. You can add it to protein drinks, you can add it to smoothies, you can even make caramel with it. It's sort of liquid caramel. This is called whey. Do not chuck it, it makes the dreamiest, lightest American pancakes. Um, so that is a benefit of doing this yourself. And then you can see, so the whey just drains down, you can see I've just got a little bit extra in there, into the Thermomix bowl and leaves you with this really thick and creamy yogurt on the top. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh that directly into my Thermomix. So let's, re -zero, let's zero the scale. So 10 just means zero. Okay. So straight out of my muslin. So do forgive the color of this. This is because I drain sorts of things like red currant jelly and like jams through it. Um, but very handy. You get this cheesecloth muslin. You could use a nut milk bag if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna spoon it, straighten it. It's absolutely delightful and it's a lot thicker. So this will be a solution. If some of you find your yogurt is too thin, strain it you do you lose a bit but anyway you end up with this beautiful substance here right i've gone a bit how over long, Lindsay, how long would the whey last for <laughs> dale is asking the milk really so again same as milk a week in the fridge yeah just be sensible with it basically um right vanilla sugar another amazing thing that you can bake in your thermomix here we go i've got a whole jar full of vanilla sugar vanilla pod Set into regular granulated sugar, left for a couple of days, and then you can grind it up. Much cheaper than buying it. So I've got some vanilla sugar here. Uh, now, this is where Louise, as a nutritional therapist, would completely cut out the sugar. I, my children won't eat it if I completely cut out the sugar. So I, but I have reduced the sugar sort of by about a quarter. Um, so I've got about 80 grams going in there instead. Then pop the lid on. It's uh, like a rare thing in this house. <laughs> seem, everything seems to vanish when I do these demos. And I'm just going to mix it for 30 seconds of speed through. So what I'm going to do is mix it. You can see we've got the clock counting down. And then, this one I made earlier. This is one, this is one I prepared earlier. So can you see I set it into... It's just literally right out of the freezer, so it's not going to come out at the moment. What I'm going to do, here we go, I've got a lion's tray here. Get you up again. Oh, this is annoying. Right, it's a fine balancing act on my tripod. Okay. So it's telling me to remove the butterfly whisk on my Thermomix screen, then transfer. So I've just got a lined tray here. All I'm going to do is just pour it in there. When, so when you make your yogurt, your Greek yogurt in or any yogurt in the Thermomix, you've got two choices really. You can either ferment it in the Varoma attachment, um, which is what I've got here. So you can ferment um, overnight. So that will mean that the Thermomix will hold it at a sort of a constant temperature that's optimal for fermentation. Or you can do it in the way I'm about to show you, which doesn't actually consume any power or electricity. So it's a bit cheaper. Even though the power draw will be minimal if you're running it on, the, on running the Thermomix overnight, it does switch on and off. 
um, and it keeps it on a very minimal setting. There is still a draw, but you can do it in a serving bowl for nothing. So there's my mixture going in there. Just let's spread it out a little bit evenly. And then the idea is I'm not going to do this all because, you know, I'm a bit of a, I've got a bit of OCD when it comes to cooking, I'm afraid. So then the idea is you just pop on your strawberries like that, all beautifully, and make, and then you stick it in the freezer for sort of four to, oh, three to four hours, really. Um, this one's just come out. So here's, I love doing this. Here's one I made earlier. I can pretend I'm on food pizza now. Um, that probably won't release unless I just get a knife in. Mm. I might just need to leave it outside. Oh, oh there we go. Ah, there we go. So you've got this little frozen yogurt bar, which you can then cut into pieces and, and just have as a little kind of after school snack or, you know, just a little treat after dinner. So that is, that is the yogurt bar. Uh, right, now, I'm gonna, I was gonna just finish off by showing you what I'm gonna do with the mixture that has been made in the other Thermomix for the Aptima. So here we go. I've got some jars. This is one of the Thermomix um, jars. The rest of my Thermomix jars are all in the fridge with yogurt in them. So I've had to use some other emergency jars. So what I'm going to do is just pop in. Um, now you can add, and I clearly forgot to, so my children probably won't be drinking this, but you can add a little bit of sugar to this um, just to make it a little bit more palatable. I should have made, I should have added it in before I heated it up. Never mind, I didn't. I completely missed it. Um, I'm just going to pour it into the jars. It doesn't matter. I mean, the bacteria is still going to sort of feast on the um, lactose in the milk. So it will still, they will still ferment. You see the milk going in and then you just pop the lids on. So here we go, lids go on like this. Let's say clean. So these jars have been cleaned. I clean, always clean my jars through um, the dishwasher and then I pop them into the oven to sterilize afterwards. And then I'm just gonna pop them in two minutes, oh, not even two minutes. I'm gonna pop them into the Thermomix serving bowl which is a double walled insulated stainless steel bowl. It's gonna keep it warm for you overnight. So I will put this, we have an airing cupboard. So I will put this in an airing cupboard or you can just leave it somewhere warm with the lid on and then it will ferment. So that is how I ferment all my yogurt inside jars. And that is actually how I fermented my Greek yogurt mixture overnight last night. Again, I will put step-by-steps on the group um, tomorrow so you can see exactly how it was done. So I just poured my Greek yogurt mixture in there without jars. Here I put my Actimals in here, or I can put yogurt jars in here with the yogurt, lid on, keep it somewhere warm overnight, and then that will ferment perfectly. And then you end up with this lovely, I'm really drink it now because I've been having wine. I think it might be a bit of a shock after wine. But there you go. You've got your beautiful sort of drinking yogurt consistency, lovely and thin. There we go. Right. So I'm done. Who am I going to, Claire? I'm I, think gonna... going... I think we're going to Louise, but I can't see Louise. She's disappeared. Louise. We're yeah. over to Louise. So I think Louise just needs to put her camera on and then I can um, spotlight her. She makes you, if she's disappeared, then wait, wait, wait. No, no, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, she's oh. there. Can you leave that one? Oh. Sorry, go. I've got an echo. That's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fine. Right, hello, yeah. I'm going to get my glamorous assessment to come and take over the, um, the camera work. There we go. Right. So, have we got me? Am I on? Thank you, Glamorous Assistant. So I'm going to be doing the um, cow probiotic shots. These don't live in Cookadoo, sorry. I was just kind of created something that I was paying for and um, thought I'm sure I can make this myself. So we're just going to use the ingredients I've got here. So we've just got coconut milk. Now you can make plant-based milks in the Thermomix. Oat milk is a definite saving. I save a fortune making my oat milk. With the coconut milk, you wouldn't save money, but you would save plastic. So I'm just gonna put in a whole thing of 
the coconut milk, and you could make your own and not have this packaging, um, but the desiccated coconut is the same price as it would be to buy the coconut milk, and the only other ingredient you need is water. So it'd be the same price to make your own, but you just wouldn't have the packaging. So coconut milk has gone in. It's not a recipe, so I'm not bothering with the touch screen to do that. I don't really weigh. Um, so I make these for my son, who is nine, and he's had them since he was about six. So he's not got a sweet tooth because, as Lindsay says, I'm quite mean and I don't put sugar into things. Um, so we just go with raw cacao. Um, I put about two tablespoons in. This was not cacao powder when it started its life. Um, it was cacao nibs, which are slightly cheaper than cacao powder. So I use the nibs, pop it on turbo four times, and it turns into the powder. So just another saving in terms of what the thermomix can do, which is why my bowl looks a bit chocolatey when I started, because I've been turboing up the, um, the nibs. I am going to put a spoonful of maple syrup in because I'm not a monster, and cacao is quite bitter. So I do put half a tablespoon in for his shots and he knows all about gut health because he's got me as a mum so he knows all about how the live bacteria go to support his immune system and help his tummy and his digestion and all those things so Louise, what did you just pop in? Louise what was that you just popped in? Maple the syrup cup? sorry did I not say? You did but we couldn't hear you say again Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Perfect. Can hear yeah, you now. Just yep. not invert sugar maple syrup, just pure Canadian maple syrup, um, because otherwise it's just got invert sugar syrup in. So live bacteria, these are just from Holland and Barrett. So they're not hugely expensive, but they do have millions and trillions of live cultures. Um, so like Lindsay showed, capsule and then just twizzle it open over the bowl and decant the live cultures. So if we could zoom in now on my glamorous assistant over into the bowl and just get a, another one going in. So I would put in a capsule per shot. So if we're going to make a week supply, then I would put in seven capsules just to get them all going in there, to get the live bacteria in, get it all fermenting nicely, etc. So they all go in and then we'll just chuck the other bits away when we're done, pop those in. And then quite simply, the lid on we're using it manually so i'm not following this instruction so i'm choosing the three dials that are the home screen and we're going to go with 20 seconds at speed nine Louise, just because you work quicker than we type, I'm not sure if you can hear yet. Possibly. So that's done. It's all whisked up nicely. So you can see in there, it's like chocolate milk, but obviously healthy chocolate milk. I'm not as good as Lindsay at pouring straight into the little glass thermomix thing. So I always decant into a jug first and then just again pop them into the jars and then they will go straight in the fridge and just. Stay in the fridge until he has them. So he'll go to the fridge and get his, his gut drink, and that will be that will just stay in the fridge until he has them. So, in terms of cost savings, I've done some maths. Um, so, this, this, the first saving is using cacao nibs and blitzing down using the turbo button, which is this button here, which gives you a one or two. Oh, it won't do it because the mixing bowl isn't in, but you press turbo, it gives you one second or two second option, and you just give that a few whizzes to get your nibs into powder. So the shots, if you buy them, would cost £1.50 each shot, which is 125 mils. To make them, it's 30 p a shot. So if you were to have one every day, if you were to buy them and have one every day, it's £10.50 a week or £42 a month, which is way more than the lowest monthly payment plan for a Thermomix. So if you were to make your own 30 p a shot, £2.10 a week, £8.40 a month, you're saving 33.60 a month on the shots alone, which is still more than the lowest Thermomix payment plan. So as I say, making your own plant-based milk as well, you're not gonna get the saving with the coconut milk because the desiccated coconut being about the same price as the coconut milk, but you are gonna save on the packaging. And with these lovely jars, you use them for all sorts of things, wash them, sterilize them, reuse them. No, 
loads of little jars going in the packaging in the recycling bin. So not just health savings, cost savings, but environmental savings as well. So I do believe that's been done. Louise, can you just remind us, we heard most of the recipe, two tablespoons of cocoa nips into powder, half a tablespoon of maple syrup. How much coconut milk did you add? So there was about one tablespoon of maple syrup. Yeah. Oh, should I just pop it in the chat? Yes, perfect. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. I'll put Brilliant. it in the chat. Thank you. Before we go over to Natasha, I, I should have said, Louise has just really reminded me, actually. Let me just put my camera back on. Do we um, need to join that one again? Yeah. Topic with the savings on the Actimel. Um, but actually, they do reflect what Louise was saying. If you make it yourself, you will save. It costs about a third to make it yourself and buy Actimel. And of course, just to echo what Louise said, a lot of reasons why people buy Thermomix these days is because they are much more environmentally conscious and you do not have all that plastic packaging going on in the bin. Instead, you can just use your reusable glass um, and then it just saves it all going into the recycling bin. So, right, I'm going to hand over to Natasha, <laughs> who is going to wow us with your green smoothie pancakes. Excellent. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Natasha. Um, Claire, when you get a sack, if you can find my other um, camera so that way you can see what my thermal mix is telling me to do. Now, like um, Marie, this is a recipe I've never made before, um, but equally I'm very confident following the steps um, and doing what it says. And funnily enough, in my cookie dew um, collections, I've saved one which is called Two Try. Um, and I've had this recipe in my Two Try folder for ages. So I was really excited when Lindsay put this um, as an option because I said, I'm dying to try that one. So I'm really excited. So it is a green smoothie pancake. Uh, being Canadian, of course, I'm a maple syrup hound. So I'm anything that I can put maple syrup on, I'm happy. So I'm just gonna press start cooking and follow that recipe. So the first thing it wants me to do is pop a banana in. Um, as you've heard everybody ever so gently taking the mickey out of me, I did destroy my shaft on the cookie dew cutter because I left it in. So triple check before you make anything, just that little visual that there isn't anything in the bowl that shouldn't be before you start. I did take my lid off, which means my scales are currently saying minus 337. So I'm just gonna press that tear button down at the bottom. So it wants a banana, about hundred grams cut into pieces. So I'm just gonna chuck in what I've got here. There we go, slightly over. Um, but again, as has been said before, they are gut. Um, Claire, you guys can hear me all right, because I'm using my ear AirPods as well. Perfect, thank you. So I have my banana in and I'm gonna press next. The next thing it's asking for is 40 grams of baby spinach. So I've got my spinach here. And I'm just gonna pop that into the, into the bowl. There we go, 42 grams is fine. And then some Greek yogurt, cheated. I haven't had time to make any, so I bought some. It's such a shame, Lindsay, that you don't live just around the corner because I would just come and get some of yours. Um, so there we go. There's some Greek yogurt. And then 80 grams of milk. I also use the same little yogurt pots that the other ones do. We all love those. And they're brilliant when you're trying to weigh things out if you want to prep and things like that as well. I'm just going to check that my scales are back at zero and I'm going to pop in 80 grams of oh, milk. We should have about that. There we go. Press next. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Back in there. And press next. And then it just wants me to, this is what I always lose when I do these, is the lid. So I'm going to pop that lid on top. My measuring cup is in. And for 15 seconds, I'm going to turn it up to speed six. So for anyone who's watching that doesn't have thermal mix, I've just realized you can't see that fully. There is a tiny little green line here, and that's your indicator of where you need to turn that um, dial to. So I'm just going to go to speed six, and it's going to mix up the, um, the banana and the bits and pieces that I have on there. There we go. And I'll turn. I don't check typically when I put on something that just goes and grabs it from the cupboard as and when I need it. But when I do these demonstrations, it's always useful for everyone else. They don't need to see me running around my kitchen. I'm going to just show you what that's done. 
you go. It's my nice, starting to look like a green smoothie. So I'm again, pop my thing down to zero and I have my flour here. So 140 grams of plain flour. Slightly low on that, so I'm hoping it's gonna be okay. Press next, some sugar, 40 grams of sugar. And again, you don't have to put in that much sugar with these recipes I've been said before, they are guys. And an egg, where's my egg? There we go, and one medium egg. So that's next, a teaspoon of bicarb of soda. There. Pitch of fine sea salt. And then again, I'm gonna pop that lid back on. Pushing next for 10 seconds. We're just gonna go up to speed four. And that's just gonna give it a gentle mix. Now I've got my hob on with some oil in a pan already heating up. And then I'm gonna take this over um, and give one a, um, give one a cook. Does so stay on here to set it aside for 15 minutes. But we're gonna make one now because I wanna compare what happens if I let it rest. So we're gonna make one now so you can see it. You can make this thing somebody just asked. You can make this recipe vegan. Um, if you take chia seeds, take one tablespoon of chia seeds, mix it with three tablespoons of water, let it sit for five minutes. And that's what they call a chia seed egg replacement. Um, and what that does is it actually binds baked goods together. Doesn't have much of a flavor, so it doesn't affect the flavor of your foods. Um, and if you wanted to make it truly vegan, you could then sub your Greek yogurt for some coconut yogurt. So it is, again, one of those recipes um, that you can um, adapt. So I'm just pushing everything back down into the bottom of my bowl. And there you go. You guys can see what that looks like in here. Now, my tip, being Canadian, I make pancakes quite a lot. I do make the American style pancakes. Your measuring cup is actually a measure. It is a hundred mil measure. It is the perfect measure for an American style pancake. Um, so when I'm making pancakes, I have my measuring cup and I pour my batter into the measuring cup and then pop it onto the, um, onto the hob. So I'm gonna take this over here. I'm hoping you can see it because there we go. And I've just got a little bit of vegetable oil in there. I'm gonna put that in. See what I mean by it's just such a nice size for a pancake. And I'm gonna let that cook until I start seeing some bubbles. It takes about a minute or two. Um, and I think it probably even says it if I go on to my next step. It says heat one teaspoon of sunflower oil in a non-stick frying pan over medium heat. Pour a small ladle of batter into the pan and fry it for one or two minutes or until bubbles start to appear and then flip it over and cook it for a further minute and then transfer it to a plate, keep it warm and repeat. I'm gonna go back, see how we're doing. There we go. So it's just cooking now. When I make my American style pancake recipe, I'll put it at this point and then sometimes I'll take up some sliced bananas and put some sliced banana in. If I'm being really, really nice and I really want my son to love me, I'll put some chocolate chips. Um, there's all sorts of things. You can put blueberries and then you just flip it over and you've got these amazing pancakes. I think I can see that it's just starting to have some bubbles. I'm just gonna wait for them to pop a little bit. Um, and then that should be ready. It's definitely not ready yet. Turn it up a little bit so you guys aren't waiting too long. But that my top tip is definitely when you're making any pancakes to use that um, measuring cup. It's the Perfect, perfect measure. Um, so that's just starting to, to bubble a little bit more. Measuring cup when I'm making crepes and pancakes. And of course, we've got pancake day coming up next month, haven't we? So yeah, it's really handy to be able to just measure out without having to look for another piece of kitchen equipment buried at the back yeah. of your drawer. Oh, absolutely. And <coughs> excuse me, I'm now. Yeah. 
you're not having to dirty anything else. You're already using your measuring cup. All goes in the dishwasher. There we go. So that, you can see it fluffing up. I'm interested to know what the difference is going to be in 15 minutes when I try another one and see if it resting that dough or the, the batter, if it's going to make it puff up more. But if you guys are happy, Lindsay, I will pass back. And while you guys carry on. Let's go, just before we, we're just going to go back to Marie. She okay. asked if you can go back to Marie. Hi. So um, I just wanted to uh, quickly uh, jump back in and show you um, where we've got up to with the recipe. So the sea bass and the vegetables and the potatoes have all been taken off. Um, uh, I've removed the aroma and just pop that to one side. And all I've done is taken the um, lettuce off of the sea bass. And uh, when I've drained the potatoes, I've kept most of them warm to one side, which I'm going to serve with the fish. And it tells you to reserve about eight chunks of potatoes for the soup. So we're going to just continue with making the cream of lettuce soup now. Okay, so we've followed the instructions, which say set the very aside, sea bass, everything that I've just talked to you through basically, um, and pop the potatoes aside to keep warm. Um, so now into the uh, liquor that's left, we're just going to add the potato pieces. And the steamed lettuce leaves are just going in there now. And simply insert the measuring cup and turn that to um, speed select to five. And then it tells you on the bottom, turn it to speed five and gradually increase to speed 10. So we're gonna blend it, but we want to make sure it's gonna grab all of those leaves and the potato first. So we turn it onto a speed five and gradually increase that as we go. So I'd normally try and talk over the thermomix, but when it's on speed 10, it even beats my loud voice. So um, <laughs> all we're going to do now is next. Uh, it just tells you literally to pour the soup into bowls, add a little watercress and a dash of olive oil if you want to for serving. And then it tells you to just serve the um, sea bass with the potatoes, uh, the remaining uh, garnish and fresh watercress, uh, along with the watercress sauce that we made earlier. I just wanted to show you that soup is blended up beautifully. That's really creamy and smooth. And actually, because the potato has made the cream effect to it, there's no cream or milk added in there. Um, so it is really light and healthy. So I'm going to dish everything up now. And if you want to... Uh, join me later at the end and I'll just show you everything plated. So Claire, I think that's, yeah, back over to Sue now. Okay, hello everyone. I am Sue Hambleton and I'm going to show you a couple of items. Um, one is a fresh fennel salad um, and the other is a beetroot carpaccio. So one of the things that I love about my um, Thermomix is it helps us all eat healthier. Um, and it's so quick and easy to do it. So there are loads of different salad options. Um, I have my teenager eating raw broccoli, but if I, asked, if I asked him to eat raw broccoli, I don't think he would, but in a lovely salad chopped up with red pepper and apple and all the um, dressing ingredients, it um, really tastes nice and it's a bit of a, a winner for lots of people. Um, but I love it when we get a new salad to try and um, Lindsay's given me this one to do today, which is a, a fresh fennel salad not tried it before, so I'm not quite sure what to expect, but um, no doubt it will be delicious as they usually are. So I'm gonna start off um, by starting to cook. I'll just bring my camera forward so that you can see what's going in. Okay, um, so this like many salads is a question of adding everything in, um, all of the um, salad ingredients and the, um, and the dressing ingredients all together and then it just chops and coats everything so you get a lovely flavour. So starting off with some um, fresh parsley leaves. 
Um, and then moving on to next, we've got one fennel bulb, which I've cut into five centimeter pieces. I'm not worrying too much about the weights here. It does ask for specific weights. Um, I'm doing a slightly smaller portion um, because there's only um, two of us here and um, that's, that's um, we're not sure whether we like it yet or not, but we'll give it a go. Um, so just making sure um, we get the right amount for us really. And then we've got green apple. Um, so I'm just gonna pop um, that in and we have got cucumber. So some big chunks of cucumber. We haven't got to do lots of chopping up here. They're going in quite large. Um, and then celery. Now I'm not a huge fan of celery. I'll put a bit less in, um, just a little bit. Um, I'm not so keen on it raw, but we'll see what it looks like. Um, so then we get onto the dressing ingredients and we need two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. And so just um, weighing that in here, uh, two teaspoons, um, stop that in. And then we've got one tablespoon of olive oil. So I'm using extra virgin olive oil for salad. Um, so a tablespoon of that. Just pull that in. And then we have, it says two pinches of salt. Often with a new recipe, you know, you can change the um, level of seasoning that you add in. Um, but to start off with, I tend to go with what it says. And then obviously you can flex it um, another time to suit your taste. And some black pepper, and pop some of that in. Okay. So literally that's everything in. Um, and what we then need to do is to put the lid on. Um, and then it's saying to us here to mix with the aid of the spatula. Um, so we've got a little video here, which it will show us exactly how to do that. Um, so if you can see on the screen, or you can see, I'm going to try and lift the camera so you can see. This is the technique that we also use when we're making fresh um, ice cream and fruit sorbet, um, where sometimes the um, contents, when they're big, just need a little bit of assistance um, in getting round. And the design is such that the um, spatula um, fits in the top. Um, that stops it from dropping through and coming into contact with the blade, but it's just going to help to assist that around. So if I can just close that video there, um, and we're going to do, um, it's asking for um, six seconds at speed four. Um, so I'm gonna have to put the camera down so I can actually do the bit with the spatula. Um, you can be able to see that here. Okay, so turning to speed four, and then just turning that around. <laughs> Okay, and then setting that to next. Um, it's asking us to scrape down the sides so we can kind of look at that. Um, okay. Just making sure that that gets mixed up. Um, so you can see the level to which that is um, chopped at the moment, like that, but we're gonna give it another go because there's a second phase of chopping, um, which we're gonna do in a second. Um, and we go, pop the lid back on. Now to put that in, um, we'll scrape the sides down and we'll go again for another, that says two seconds. I'm actually going to do that for slightly longer because I put slightly less in. Um, this is where doing it on the on the night may not be, um, <laughs> for the first time, may not be that great. Um, it's not perhaps reaching the spatula as much because the volume's slightly less, um, which is what I've done. So we'll just do that for four seconds, which can easily be able to <laughs> There we go. And then it just says transfer onto a serving plate. So I can have a look at that again now. You will see. There we go. How that looks. Um, so I'll get that popped into a serving plate. You'll be able to see that later when I've got it all in place. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to set that off on the side um, and move on to the next thing. So now, um, what I'm making next is a beetroot carpaccio, um, which is in the um, another one of the cutter recipes in the Thermomix Cutter Welcome booklet. It's a new collection that's just come out. Um, when the cutter was released. 
And um, we had a bit of a debate about this, about whether it was using raw beetroot um, to be sliced or cooked beetroot, um, because um, I wasn't quite sure what slices of, of raw beetroot would taste like. Um, but uh, what we do know is that the cutter works best um, with uh, raw food and is not really designed for cooked food. And I think actually Lindsay gave that little try and ended up with some nice beetroot puree. So, <laughs> so um, yes, it's definitely, um, definitely one for raw beetroot, which may be a um, select taste, um, but in the um, recipe that we've got here, it does come out very nice and looks great for a, for a spread. Um, so we'll just start that recipe now. Um, beetroot factory. Right, so same as the thing we're just going to pop that in, pop the um, cut the bowl in place. Um, the great thing about this is it doesn't matter if I've just made something in that bowl, it doesn't matter because the contents of what we're slicing or grating are collected in this bowl um, and not coming into contact with what's been in the actual mixing bowl. Um, so we don't need to kind of wash that in between. Um, now, what we have to do first is to weigh the ingredients. I've already done that. Um, we'll skip that on. Um, so we've weighed in some beetroot, raw beetroot. These are actually out of my garden because um, I needed small beetroot and my beetroot didn't grow terribly successfully in the garden this year. So I only ended up with small ones and some of them are really big. Um, and if they're too big, they won't fit through the, um, the cutter um, hole there. So small ones come out best. If you have larger ones, you can cut them, um, cut them in half. But I think it looks quite nice um, for effect when you've got the full round slices. So I've managed to get some um, some round ones here. Um, we've also got some courgette going in as well, um, which I've just put into chunks. Um, so I've pre-weighed those already. Um, so we're going to insert the Thermomix cutter shaft and we want disc on side two facing upwards. Um, so we're going to do the grating first of the courgette. Um, so popping that on there and then popping the lid on. Okay. And then the um, chunks of courgette are going to go into the uh, large bowl here. Um, that I could have left longer bits actually. Um, there we go. Uh, I can put that in there. And we're just going to push it through, and it says to do it on thin. You've got the option to do thin or thick grating. So we're just going to do thin grating, push that through. Okay, so that's as quick as you like. Um, and if I just take the lid off when that releases, okay, you will see. That we have some lovely fine courgette gratings, which would take a long time um, by hand, and I'd probably slice my fingers. Um, so I'm just going to set those aside into a bowl. Okay. And then we'll come on to the, um, the beetroot, which is going to um, be sliced rather than grated. So for this, we need to turn the, um, the attachment here, the whole thing around. Um, so we're going to put um, side one up. Now let's get this right. Uh, yeah, side one up. And it does tell you, it gives you that instruction on the screen. So you don't need to worry about getting that right. Um, for this sort of set recipe, um, when you're getting used to it, it will tell you exactly what to do and which way up to put it. Um, so we're side one facing up, place the cutter lid on, hold on, in position. Ah, hold on. I didn't get that right. That's more like anything. So side one, Oops. there we go. Um, and now we're going to pop the um, little beetroot in. So we'll pop that there, that there, and then we're going on to thin slices. So again, we're gonna push that through, switch it to thin and pushing it through.
So you get the idea of that. And if I take that top off. Okay. To the side, you will see how that has created lovely slices of raw beetroot. Um, so the next step in the process in that particular recipe are to um, divide that between um, the plate and then to arrange the grated courgette on top and some mozzarella cheese. I've actually got goat's cheese because we don't do cow cheese in this house, um, but I've got goat's cheese and then just drizzle it with oil, salt and pepper and some basil leaves. So that produces a lovely dish. I'm just going to assemble that now, but I'll let you get back on to the next day and can show you the end result um, when we complete. Yeah, we're going to go over to Linda, aren't we, next for the turmeric wellness shots. And yes, I saw Rhiannon in the chat said, raw beetroot is delicious with whipped goat's cheese. And you're absolutely right, it is. And there is a lovely recipe, which I think Claire has linked on the chat to the beetroot carpaccio with a sort of a goat's cheese or a feta type mousse, which is... Yes, that's right, Lindsay. And actually that particular recipe does use cooked beetroot because that came, I think that was before the cutter came about. Um, yeah. But you could absolutely use that um, that particular goat's um, cheese dressing with the raw beetroot, and that would make a lovely combination. Right. Okay. So um, I'm doing the uh, turmeric uh, wellness shot, um, and uh, when I priced this up, I was really, really, really surprised because. Um, I bought all the ingredients and um, it actually added up the whole of the ingredients for nine shots actually added up to one pound and five P, which made it 12 P per shot, which is absolutely incredible because when I went onto the internet and had a look, um, the cheapest that I could find was actually two pound 25 a shot. So this is a really, really good recipe for that. So basically, you literally put all the ingredients in together and uh, it's really, really quick. So we're going to do, it says one lemon, um, flesh only, no white. So that's going in there. Next one is uh, the turmeric, which is here. I found a really good local place that um, sells it um, fresh. So that was great. Um, and then we've got our ginger going in, 200 grams of fresh pineapple pieces. You can use tinned um, or you can use frozen, uh, but this is, this is really nice and sweet and um, that really nicely. So that's all going in there. And then we go next, well, and now we've got 400 grams of a filtered water. So throw all that in. This is 400 grams if it's made my joke measures correctly. Oh, a little bit. Okay, so go next. So we've got a little bit of um, ham pepper. So just do a little couple of pinches of that. And the next bit is some black pepper really quick i mean how can you can't get much quicker than that can you so it's now asking me to put the lid on and insert the measuring cup and it's one minute uh, at speed nine so here we go might be a bit noisy Lindsay, can I just say, I never knew that you could freeze turmeric. Excellent. Yeah, no, no, you can. Very much like ginger. That's how I um, do all my ginger and, and, and turmeric. Because otherwise, you, I mean, you buy a pack of it and you'll never use it all up in one go. So peel it, portion it up, freeze it, and there you go. Little chef hat for you. Every day's a school day. 
Is Lin Linda's doing a little dance for her blend? Is it a one minute blend, Linda? <laughs> wow, it's done. Okay. Hey! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a bit noisy, and there's not a lot of point me speaking because, um, you know, you wouldn't have been able to hear me anyway. So, we have our shop now, and um, there's quite a lot in there. It says that there are nine shops in there. Um, and as I say, worked out from uh, the ingredients that I bought at uh, 12p. So there we go. Yep. Uh, again, another big tip for saving all that plastic, isn't it, Linda? Because the little shops that you buy, I mean, the ones I see in Asda are like four or five pounds a pop. I cannot believe anybody would, buy, would, would spend that on these little tiny things, but there you go. And of course you don't have all the plastic. So let's finally, I know we're just slightly running late, but we've got so much to show you this evening. So hopefully you're still, well, we've got 60 or so of you still with us, which is fantastic. Um, but let's finally go to Sarah, who's just going to show us some energy balls. Another great thing that you can make with your Thermomix much more cheaply than buying them. Hi. You see me, yeah? My spotlight. Ah, there we go. Hi. Right, last but not least, the energy balls. I'll be as quick as I can. So I've got um, 100 grams of dry rose and peas. Hang on, I've got to do it quick. Four seconds at speed six. Just going to. And these I'm going to just transfer the because this is just going to leave some slightly chunkier bits of peanut um, see that. in the balls. So it's slightly this is very similar actually, it's the same way you would make peanut butter. Um, if you wanted crunchy peanut butter, you would do it like this. If you wanted smooth peanut butter, I'm gonna put some more peanuts in now. Um so you just do it for longer. For those recipes for both. Putting the lid on. This is going to do 15 seconds at speed. Okay. As I say, you do actually with the peanut butter, you do slightly longer. Straight down the sides. It says we'll add a tablespoon of sunflower oil. That's only good. You can measure it out. I do need to just dollop it in. There we go. Next. I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to skin it a little bit more. Right. 15 seconds again. Seven. In fact, when we make the peanut butter, we don't we don't bother putting any oil in because, as I say, the, the peanuts have their own oil, quite good oil content in anyway. Right. To show you the creaminess of the, of the um, peanut butter. Now, the cacao powder, I'm going to take that bit. 20 grams of cacao powder. This is how to make it attractive to children. And some argyle syrup, just to give it a little bit of sweetener. This is 90 grams of this, but again, you don't need to put that much in. Or a bit more, because I just put an extra squeeze. Right. Two pinches of salt. Again, if you don't want the salt in, you don't need to put it in. Sorry, I put this in my now. Right. And then the magic of the amaranth. Um, this is great. Uh, so, 
so good for your health. Unwrap. You just need to Google it and see the benefits of the unwrap. And it is a um, and then reserve. Sorry, the reserve chop peanuts. It's naturally gluten free. It's very rich in protein and fiber. Um, it's got many, many um, important micronutrients in there. Okay. So I'm just going to mix this for 15 seconds in reverse. It's also packed with magnesium, um, rich, in, uh, rich in iron, which helps produce, your body produce blood. Loads of antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, uh, cholesterol lowering properties. It's just amazing, amazing stuff. It's, it's similar to the wheat, but it's, it's gluten free, so it's not, it's not the same. Thing, but it tastes similar, it's quite nutty. Right, sweet the face for mixing bowl. It's going quite perfect consistency now. It's just going to want me to mix it a little bit more. It is five seconds more, but it's really worth just googling amaranth. See it's um, health benefits. And also, just put it in your cookie do. In cookie do, you can just put it in your search bar and see what comes up. There's loads of different recipes which include amaranth. And then, all you do, oh, actually, I was going to, which I forgot to do. I was going to put, add some um, maca powder. Revi revitalizes the body and focuses the mind. Obviously, I need it because I forgot to put it on. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I just make them into 26 gram balls. Now I've worked this out. I saw in Holland and Barrett, they sell an energy ball. What was it for? £1.69 for one, £19.99 for 12. Um, I've worked these out for 35 gram balls, so the same as that is 19p. That's a massive saving. And also, I don't like to make these too big because I'll eat too many. Um, I can eat more if they're smaller. So it's a huge saving. You know what's in them. Also on the Holland Barrett one, you know, they obviously have to still put in a few additives and preservatives. With these, yeah, you've perhaps got a few from the syrup, but you know, it's minimal, minimal. And you've got all pure ingredients in that. So I'm just going to literally roll Roll it all up into little balls. It's very easy to handle. And I'm going to pop that in the fridge for a couple of hours and then that's our snacks. And we're, we're being a bit healthy at the moment, along with oh. many people, you know, January. Um, <laughs> and these are just a great little snack. And if you've been for a run or you've done some exercise, it's just it's just a nice little boost. And even for the kids picking them up after school, you know, they can they can have them because it's got the cocoa powder in and a bit of syrup. Um, it's got the sweetness in it. So yeah, boom. Right. Back. Thank you. Thank you, Cutty. And of course, right, um, Claire, can you just spotlight me uh, again? Uh, just both can, have you got both views of me? So I know that's a bit scary <laughs> for most people. Um, but I just wanted to show you these were the ones that we were gonna show you, the superfood energy balls. I made them last night. Um, mainly because I had all the ingredients in my cupboard and I wanted to give them a go. Um, so these ones, I mean, there are so many different types of these uh, balls on um, Cookie Duke. You can have a real play. There's lemon and coconut ones, there's carrot cake ones. There's just regular sort of caramel-y type datey ones. Um, as Louise says, our nutritional therapist, she says she just uses anything that she's got in a cupboard. As long as you put like date, usually dates and a, and a nut, type ingredient. So I use cashew nuts, Sarah's done hers with peanut, but we have a peanut butter allergy or peanut allergy rather in our house. So I can't use peanuts. So I tend to use the cashew nuts. So I made these ooh, I made these ones last night. Um, these have got dates, cashew nuts, oats. Um, they've got some super greens powder. So super greens powder, actually, Claire, I don't know if you can link to this on the chat. You can make your own, would you believe it, super greens powder um, in the Thermomix just by puring lots of greens up. Then you can dehydrate it in a low oven and then you would blitz the powder up. A bit like if you're gonna make some stock powder in the Thermomix, same process. Um, we 
which would be a lot cheaper, obviously, than buying it. I, I had some, you can either use wheatgrass or spirulina, or you can use the super greens. Um, what else have we got in there? Pumpkin seeds, they've got a teaspoon of ginger for a bit of a kick. You could use some cayenne pepper. Um, and incidentally, uh, th there's black pepper and cayenne pepper in the turmeric wellness shots because that helps the absorption um, of, of turmeric. Um, what else have we got in here? I can't even remember. Loads of really lovely things. There so many, so I just got loads of stuff out of my cupboard and just chucked it in, in, in the Thermomix. It blitzed it all up in 20 seconds and then I rolled it into balls and then I rolled it in this, the red ones you can see, I rolled it in some dehydrated beetroot powder. Again, I did have some beetroot powder because I've got literally everything in my store cupboard. Um, but again, you could make it. You could puree some beetroot up, you could dehydrate it. If you've got a dehydrator or a ninja that dehydrates, you could do it in there or you can do it in a low oven. Um, and then you just portion it out. Little tip for portioning. Um, Sarah's using her hands. I've got one of these little, uh, very small ice cream scoop straight into the mixture, pop it out into your hand, roll it up. And then you've got, I have a small confession to make. There were double the amount of these but that yesterday evening, but they are so good. Um, that's all I've got left. Um, but again, you know, a huge, huge cost saving when making yourself and you know exactly what's in it and you don't have the packaging as well, which really does just sum up what the Thermomix is about. So thank you for bearing with us. I know we are, we've just gone slightly over, about 15 minutes over. We do try and keep these to an hour and a half, um, but um, I'm sure you'll agree. We've had so much to show you this evening. I hope you, you'll have found it's been worthwhile. Just to recap on the, on the main points, if you are thinking about um, getting a Thermomix, we have got one week left on our interest-free offer. Um, on the one year plan so that with monthly repayments starting at £100 a month um, so £25 a week you will save double triple that by having a Thermomix in your kitchen um, if we also offer other finance plans two three and four year finance plans you can buy a Thermomix for less than a pound a day you will save two or three times that every single day if not more by using your Thermomix day in day out and it is our job to inspire you and to help you to do that there is nothing more we love than showing our customers exactly what this incredible appliance can do not only that this month until the 31st of january you have the a fantastic offer on the cutter bundle for 30 pounds just 30 pounds instead of 85 pounds it's also not available to existing customers so you are getting a really exclusive product there for a few weeks if you would like to host a demo if you want to see more what this can do in person if you want to turn it into more of a social event please do not hesitate to invite your friends ask your thermo suppliers to come around and run a demo for you they are great fun very enjoyable and we will also give you a free gift which this month is a copy of our plant-based cookbook or the beautiful uh, bamboo chopping board i don't know why i'm doing this because actually i don't have them to hand but they are somewhere in this kitchen um, and finally, if you would rather not pay for your Thermomix, but you would like to earn one, or if you are a customer and want to earn uh, your second Thermomix, uh, again, you can become a Thermomix advisor and earn a Thermomix by making four sales within 90 days. It's very achievable. It's great fun. We have a fantastic community that we all love being part of. We're great friends. I have made friendships up and down the country. Um, I work with people that inspire me and I love talking to on a daily basis. Um, and I can't wait to see you, um, lots of you up in Glasgow next week where, where we are being treated to an all expenses paid few days away in Glasgow. So not only can you earn your Thermomix, you earn lots of lovely other stuff along the way. And it is really great fun and you form lots of friendship. So I hope you have enjoyed this evening. We've enjoyed having you. Any questions? please shoot them over to your advisor. Please do join my Thermomix with customer group. Um, lots and lots of inspiration on there. Claire's got her own group, Natasha's got her own group, Katty's got her own group. We'll put the links in the chat and we'll also email you uh, all of our details um, after the session so that you can connect with all of us if you want to, um, if you haven't had enough of us, <laughs> of course. But we hope you very much enjoyed it. We've loved um, showing you all of these amazing dishes uh, and uh, we hope to see you on another event very, very soon. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Oh, can we see oh, the back? can we see everything? Sorry, we need to show everybody the dishes. Right, sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm going to add, I'll add, you, I'll add you all together. I'll add you all together. Yeah. There you go. Right. 
let's have a look. So we need to show, everybody needs to show their recipes. Right. Where's Marie's gone? Where's Marie? The bass. I found Marie, just can't find Louise. <laughs> She's gone. She's there. Where is she? On the bottom, isn't she? She's on the bottom. No, that's Marie. Can't find Louise. Oh, Louise. Marie, no, she's on the bottom. No, Louise, she's looking for Louise. Oh, yeah. Oh, and one final thing to say, if you can still hear me, sorry, I'm sure you've all had enough of me. I am running a virtual induction for, for new customers next Tuesday evening via Zoom. I won't be cooking, but the idea of that session is I will be walking you through all of the modes and features of the Thermomix, as well as looking at cookie do, um, so that you really become and know how to use your Thermomix and you're not scared of switching it on. <laughs> no, I, th I think Louise has gone. <laughs> Can't find her. Where's Sue? I'm here. Who's there? Can you see? Because I, I didn't show you the final such, so yep. we have the, the fennel salad here. Um, and I kept a few of the fronds off the top just to show on that. Um, here is the um, beetroot carpaccio. Um, just as it is from the from the recipe, and then I quickly whizzed up. I didn't have a chance to show um, a creamed um, goat's cheese with creme fraiche. Um, I used only going creme fraiche actually with herbs and stuff. And then we've got a second version here, which has some of that on, which actually tastes delicious. So uh, we're looking forward to some healthy food. Marie, what do yours look like? It looks amazing. You've got a real feast in front of you for literally no, not really much effort. <laughs> I have. Well, you say no effort, actually. I worked out, I've been keeping a time of, um, because there's not particularly cost saving on this. Obviously, it is energy, energy efficient because it's all the multi-layer cooking. But it took me 13 minutes of hands-on time, including peeling and chopping potatoes in advance of this, for a two-course meal for two people, 13 minutes. I mean, if that's yeah. not worth buying a Thermomix, I don't know what is. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Natasha, your pancakes look insane. Oh my goodness, they taste phenomenal. So yeah. like massively excited about these. <laughs> yeah, and let's have a look at Cutty's veg vegetable rosties. So, oh sorry, that's the rosties. They're delicious, I have tucked in already. I made a dill sauce on the recipe. There's a dill and parsley sauce to go with it, creme fresh, but they're really tasty. Yeah, they look good. Yep. And My Linda, team. have you snuck some gin in your one yet? <laughs> no, um, no, not tonight, but I'm sure it might happen. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, well, thank you everybody for bearing with us. You know, we still got 50 almost, well, we had still had almost 50 people on here nearly two hours later, so that's amazing going. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, we love what we do and, you know, we love helping our customers. So, you know, thank you for making our job possible. All right. End the recording. Let's stop now.